better ways mm -hmm. than God's ways in this. We walk by faith, not by sight. Amen. Not by flesh. What we see and what's really the truth is in the Word of God, not what we're seeing out there. The reality is in heaven. All right, so before we start our study, I want us to go to uh, Proverbs chapter 9. That Andrea put up there on the board for us. Did a great job there with that good she job. I'm just going to back up a couple of verses to get the context and we'll roll through this. I'm going to go back to uh, verse 9 and we'll just roll through this a little bit. Yeah. I love hearing the pages of the Bible term. <laughs> yeah. Seems like this day of, you know, electronics at this. <laughs> you get the clip yeah. and that's all you see, you know. I mean, even I use it, but I use it so I can get through this. It helps me. All right. Look what it says in verse 9. Of Proverbs chapter 9. Instruct the wise and they will be even wiser. Teach the righteous, and they will learn even more. Fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. As we've been reading through the uh, Daily Walk Bible, yeah. you really learn how to reverence and fear the Lord for what he, how he is in his corrective nature, and how he loves his children, but he loves his children in a way not like human love. And, no, if he has to discipline us, he's going to do it. And do it because he does it because he loves us. So that's, it gives you a, a good, healthy fear. Like if I'm going to go do something that's disobedient, that there is going to be a call to pay for that sooner or later. Amen. There's going to be a consequence coming down the road. Amen. So it makes us stop and think. You know, wait a minute. I'm going to stop and think about this. God is God, is God and he simply gives me a choice to do the right thing. Amen. It's all on me now whether I make that choice to do the right thing or not. And he says it in, in, in the Old Testament too. Oh, that you would choose life as we continue on and read Deuteronomy. Now look what it says. Fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. Knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. We come here, we learn about God, we get good knowledge of God's Word and His ways, and that will give us good judgment in making our choices and decisions down here. If we follow His ways. That's why we have to learn His ways and get them up here. So when we're out there, we can actually use that thought process instead of the world's mm -hmm. thought process. And that's what takes the time. Mm -hmm. Wisdom will multiply your days and add years to your life. If you become wise, you will be the one who be to benefit. If you scorn wisdom, you will be the one to suffer. Mm -hmm. You know, there's people that you just can't, that think that they know everything, mm -hmm. and, they're, and they're just not teachable anymore because they think yeah. that they know everything already, so nothing gets in there because they're already full of themselves. Yeah. And they're unteachable. It's called closed-minded. The Bible opens our minds and our hearts Amen. to receive God's ways and empty out the world's ways. All right, this is where she came in, verse 13. Folly calls for a hearing. The woman named Folly is brash. She is ignorant and doesn't know it. She sits in her doorway on the heights overlooking the city. She calls out to men going by who are minding their own business. Come in with me, she urges the simple. To those who lack good judgment, she says. Stolen water is refreshing. Food eaten in secret tastes the best. Mm -hmm. But little do they know that the dead are there. Mm -hmm. The guests are in the depths of the grave. Boy, I'll tell you, they, t they talk about that. And I mean, that can go for a lot of different things, not just, you know, women doing that. There's a lot of things and stolen, stolen water is refreshing. Food eaten in secret tastes the best. They're trying to say that sin is better than life. So in other words, like the things you do in secret that gratify your flesh is better than the life that we live walking with the Lord because there's adversities. But it says little do they know that the dead are there. See, sin brings death. So it might give you pleasure for a season and you might get benefit of it now when you do a sin, but in the end, it produces death. Yeah. See, when you deny that sin and you live for God, in the end, it, it produces life. 
because you're not doing that sinful stuff anymore and it's not killing you it's bringing life into you amen, amen. and it tells us you know it's talking about you know prostitutes or whatever that was all back back in the old testament it was prostitutes in the temple prostitutes there was all kinds of there's a lot of things that can lead us out of the will of god a lot of things out there and i the the the, the flesh the lust of the eyes, you know, Job was talking about lust of the eyes. Help me not to look lustfully at other at anything, you know. It's just, it's good to this, like, we know that what that causes. We know what the end result is of when we follow our flesh. But when we follow the Spirit, it brings life to us. Amen. But it might not come right away. See, we want things right away. We want, that's why we sin. Because we want instant gratification. See, when we do things in the Spirit, it's delayed gratification. Things uh, work out later at the end of the day when you evaluate your life and you didn't do that. You feel refreshed and alive that you didn't fall to your mm -hmm. sin nature. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. So that was a good scripture, by the way. But Proverbs is good. You know, there's 31 Proverbs in the Bible. It wouldn't hurt to read one a day. To add to your, to add to your, to add to your you know, wisdom for the Lord. The, the Proverbs is full of it. There's so many things to do in the Bible. All right, let's go back to, let's go to, let's see if we can, we might be able to finish our Roman study tonight. Does anybody remember where we left off? Chapter uh, 19, uh, chapter 16, 16, verse 19. Yeah, we went to 19. We'll just back up a little bit. All right. Let's back up to verse 14, and we're going to come down, and then we'll get into chapter 16, and maybe we'll be able to finish this. It may be, be it may be into introduce the next study we're going to be going into. All right, look what it says in, in verse 14, Paul's reason for writing. I am fully convinced, my dear brothers and sisters, that you are full of goodness. See, once you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Lord fills us with his goodness. There's only one thing that's stopping us. Flesh. Mm -hmm. Our self-righteousness and our selfishness. Look what it says. You know these things so well, you can teach each other all about them. Even so, I've been bold enough to write about some of these points, knowing that all you need is this reminder. For by God's grace, I am a special messenger from Christ Jesus to you Gentiles. That's why we like to study the book, the books of Paul, because he wrote, these are for us. The Old Testament was written for the Jews and the things, but we can glean off of that. But this was written specifically for Gentiles. This is good. I bring you the good news that I might present you as an acceptable offering to God made holy by the Holy Spirit. So I have reason to be enthusiastic about all Christ Jesus has done through me in my service to God. Yet I dare not boast about anything except what Christ has done through me, bringing the Gentiles to God by my message and by the way I worked among them. They were convinced by the power of miraculous signs and wonders and by the power of God's Spirit. Other manuscripts read the Spirit. Still others read the Holy Spirit. In this way, I have fully presented the good news of Christ from Jerusalem all the way to Illyricum. Remember I said, well, what's Illyricum? That's a region northeast of Italy. Italy, by the way. My ambition has always been to preach the good news where the name of Christ has never been heard, rather than where a church has already been started by someone else. So Paul, used to, he was a missionary. He started churches, he left the rest of God, they appointed elders and deacons and pastors, and he moved on to other regions to build other churches. That's what his job was, he was on a mission field. And he brought them up in Christ. Now look what it says. The church, can we, how can we, can, can we, like, can we are, by the way, you know that we're the church, right, not this building. Mm -hmm. You can start a church anywhere, <coughs> at work. At the donut shop, you can you can talk about Jesus anywhere and start it where the name of Christ has never been heard. Because let me tell you, there's some people out there that don't know anything about God. The way this generation is coming up, nobody's been taught about God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Some people never ever heard of God yeah. or Jesus or any of that. You, you you'd be surprised that we know so much about it, but there's so many people that don't know about it, mm -hmm. that are dying to know about it, that just don't know about it, and we and we could use us as messengers. I want an amen for that. Right. We, we get, we learn, to, what, what, why do we get saved? Why does God save you? So you can help others get saved. He gives you a purpose. 
When you live with purpose, your life means a whole lot. It takes on a different meaning. When you live for God's purposes instead of your own, you'll never get disappointed and frustrated because God has a purpose for each and every one of you, and wherever you are, God has you there. And if you understand that, you won't be so miserable. You say, well, God has me here for a reason. What that reason is, I have to look. All right, Lord, what do you want me to do here? What would you have me do? Even in my own life, in my personal life, in my home, when situations come, we understand that God is teaching us something through everything. Because God is everywhere. When God says, I'm going to go ahead of you. So whenever you wake up in the morning, like I said, you're on the mission field. And whenever you sit down, you're on the mission field. God's working inside of us. You ever, have, you ever get your thought process going? Mm -hmm. You start thinking about, you know, things in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you might drift off the things of the world. And then, oh, I was reading the Daily Walk, and I remember this, and things start to mm -hmm. click. But if you remember, years ago, God never came into your mind. Now that you're growing, God's word's coming into your mind more and more. So you have to understand it's a process. <clears throat> it, it, you wish you would stay in there all day. <laughs> but that's the process of sanctification. It comes slowly. And by repetition. Now look what it says. I have been following the plan spoken in the scriptures where it says, Those who have never heard, never been told about him will see. And those who have never heard of him will understand. Quote in Isaiah 52, 15. In fact, my visit to you has been delayed so long because I have been preaching in these places. But now I have finished my work in these regions, and after, and after all these long years of waiting, I am eager to visit you. I am planning to go to Spain, and when I do, I will stop off in Rome. And after I have enjoyed your fellowship for a little while, you can provide for my journey. They had to take care of him. But before I come, I must go to Jerusalem to take a gift to the believers there, or God's holy people. See, he was all, Paul was all over the place. Mm. Take a gift there and go here, go. Listen, we're all over the place. We're on the mission field, all of us. Look what it says. For you see, the believers in Macedonia and Acacia, Macedonia and Acacia were the northern and southern regions of Greece, by the way. Okay? Have eagerly taken up an offering for the poor among the believers in Jerusalem. If you think about it, back in them days, okay, those churches were all bound together. They were all in unity with each other. They brought mm -hmm. gifts to each other. Oh, mm -hmm. Now, you got churches going against each other. Yeah. Totally different. You can tell that the churches are in apostasy right now. Mm -hmm. It's nothing like that. You know, I'm going to go bring a gift to that church and that. No, everybody's talking bad about another church and this, that, and the other thing. Instead of being in unity, I don't want to go to that church to teach the wrong stuff. So Paul taught them all to teach the word of God. That's why they were all in unity. Paul was their teacher. He was teaching them about Christ through the word of God. A lot of people out there preaching weren't sent by God. They were sent by the devil to cause confusion and division. Mm -hmm. They sent, they, were, they went, but they weren't sent. They take it up as a profession instead of a call. Mm. They take a pastor as a job instead of a call. Yeah. It's a whole different thing, and they teach the wrong stuff. Mm. As a matter of fact, they don't even teach the Word of God most of the churches anymore. All they do is have songs and gimmicks and things and all kinds of emotional stuff. So we can, what, feed our flesh and feel good. Nice period. I went to church and I felt good. No, how about I went to church and I got convicted because I've been living wrong. And I needed to get right. I needed to get corrected. The, the church is a blessing and a corrective thing too. Because all of us go off course. We're like sheep. We're prone to wander. wander. And we do. Amen. That's why I'm saying, wow, I don't know how people can go so long between church and not wander. Because the world comes at you, like in a couple of days, it's like, wow, you start drifting. Mm -hmm. That's like, time to get plugged back in, back to church. Mm -hmm. this, that's the way it is for me anyway. That's why I'm glad we do this. I hope that you're seeing that too, that you need that. Now look what it says. They were glad, look at verse 27. They were glad to do this. 27, they were glad to do this because they feel they owe a real debt to them. Since the Gentiles received the spiritual blessings of the good news from the believers in Jerusalem, they feel the least they can do is return is to help them financially. 
See, somebody that taught him the good news, he said, well, the least we could do is help finance that and get it going. Wherever God, wherever God sent you or wherever you got saved, you know, I want to support that. And they, they, were, they were eager to do it. As soon as I have delivered this money and completed this good deed of theirs, I will come to see you on my way to Spain. And I am sure that when I come, Christ will richly bless our time together. Mm -hmm. Dear brothers and sisters, I urge you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to join in my struggle by praying to God for me. You see what he's saying here? I urge you to, in the name of the Lord Jesus to join in my struggle. He didn't say to join in my blessing. He said to join in my struggle. How about you? Are you willing to join in the struggle to build the church? You know it's a struggle to build this. It's not just, it doesn't just flow easy. The, the, the kingdom of God forcefully advances. It's a struggle to get this out there. It's a struggle to help the church. Listen, if I, if I, if I went by all the adversities, I, I would have gave up a long time ago. We Amen. struggle and struggle and struggle. And we keep moving forward in spite of what we feel and what we see. Because God called us to do it. Amen. And we just keep doing it. And we struggle and we pray. And we keep going forward despite the adversities of how we feel. And sadness and all the things and whatever it is, you just say, God, I know God called me to do it, so I'm going to do it. And I'm going to be faithful to it. Because God is always faithful to me. But I like that, what he said. Dear brothers and sisters, I urge you in the name to join me in my struggle by praying to God for me. Let me go there for a minute. <clears throat> Too often, okay, we see prayer as a time for comfort, okay? Reflection or making requests to God. But here, Paul urges believers to join in his struggle by means of prayer. Prayer is a weapon that all believers should use in interceding for others. Okay? Many of us know believers who are living in difficult places in order to communicate the gospel. Okay? Sending them funds is part of joining them in their struggles, but prayer is also a crucial way of being with them. Missionaries strongly desire the prayers of those who have sent them out. Do your prayers reflect that struggle on their behalf? Mm -hmm. do, you ever play, do you ever pray for other people that are struggling mm -hmm. in other churches? Or are you just praying for your own things? Mm -hmm. Are you praying for the benefit of the churches and praying for people? This is how you know you're growing when you say, it's not just about me, mm -hmm. we're a family. Mm -hmm. I pray for people that are struggling. You know when people aren't sitting here you know that either they got a problem with God or their flesh is getting the best of them or they don't like something they heard or like something that God is talking to them about, so they leave. Mm -hmm. Then they get all frustrated and then they fall on their face and then they come back. So you know when they come back, you just say, glad to have you back, brother. We know the struggle here. Some people can get offended by the word of God, especially if they're going through something. They walk away from this. But the Bible tells us we should get corrected by it and be joyful. Mm -hmm. All right. So we understand that. Look what it says. I urge you to join me. Look, I pray that I will be rescued from those in Judea who refuse to obey God. Pray also that the believers there will be willing to accept the donation. See it? Or the ministry or other manuscripts read the gift. I am taken to Jerusalem. Then, by the will of God, I will be able to come to you with a joyful heart, and we will be an encouragement to each other. And now, may God who gives us his peace be with you all. Amen. So, listen. Do you pray for other churches? Pray that they will come into unity? Look, because I'll tell you right now, the devil is all in up in the churches right now. Yeah. The devil is in all the churches. <laughs> Telling people they don't have to read the word of God the, the, the Word of God is not the, the structural foundation of the churches anymore. It's about getting numbers. How many people got saved today? Oh, we, how many people got saved today? And they want to know, like, how many people came to Jesus that day. That is not what the church is all about. All right, let's go to chapter 16. We're going to talk about this a little bit. Maybe we'll be able to close this.
Romans chapter 16, verse 1. I commend my, our sister Phoebe, who is a deacon in the church in Chen, Chentria. All right, let's turn these. Here come some of the names now, okay? Bear with me. I'm going to come up some names again, okay? Pray that I can get these out right. Welcome her in the Lord as one who is worthy of honor among God's people. Help her in whatever she needs, for she has been helpful to many, especially to me. Give my greetings to Priscilla and Aquila, my co-workers in the ministry of Jesus Christ. In fact, they once risked their lives for me. I am thankful to them, and so are all the Gentile churches. Also, give my greetings to the church that meets in their home. Greet my dear friend Eponidas. He was the first person from the province of Asian, Asia to become a follower of Christ. Give my greetings to Mary, <laughs> who has worked so hard for your benefit. Now, before we go there, I just want to say something about Phoebe, okay? And a lot of people don't understand the woman's role in the churches. Let me tell you something right now. This ministry would be in bad shape if we didn't have women in here. Let me tell you something. I'm just so grateful, so thankful for each and every one of you <laughs> women in this. I just want to let you know how much you're needed. Each and every one of you. And how much the churches do not give honor to the women of the church when they should. Because the Bible tells us clearly that Phoebe was a deacon. Okay? A deacon is a servant. Okay? There are no woman pastors, but there are woman servants. As a matter of fact, most of the women here serve and they keep this place going. Thank you, Jesus, for all he is. Amen. I just want you to know that you're very much needed and appreciated. Especially the women that do everything around here for the ministry. Man, they stick around and do everything. It's amazing. Phoebe, I'm going to talk about Phoebe for a minute. She was known as a deacon or a servant, okay? And a helper. Apparently, she was a wealthy person who helped support Paul's ministry. Phoebe was highly regarded in the <coughs> church. And she may have delivered this letter from, Cor from um, Corinth to Rome, okay? This pr provides evidence that women had important roles in the early church. Chantria, the town where Phoebe lived, was the eastern port of Corinth, six miles from the city center. Okay, so that's, I just want you to know how important it is, each and every one of you, uh, all the women here. So I just want to thank you all for serving so faithfully and coming so faithfully, okay? So don't think that we glance off, because a lot of churches, they don't, they don't recognize women like they should. And let me tell you something. Without the women, we'd be done. Yeah. Okay. We'd be done. Believe me. They step up more than the guys. Most of the time. Yeah. I'm saying, what the heck? I'm saying, well, I'm surrounded by women. Where's all the men? Where's all the male soldiers? Come on, guys. Get with it. The girls are definitely putting you to shame. I mean, whenever there's a need... They're there. They're on it. They fill it. It's amazing. All right, now, let's talk about Priscilla and Aquila now, okay? They were a married couple. Here's another part of it. Who had become Paul's close friends, okay? They, along with all the other Jews, have been expelled from Rome by the emperor. In Acts chapter 18, verse 2 and 3 tells us. And had moved to Corinth. There they met Paul and invited him to live with them. They were Christians before they met Paul and probably told him much about the Roman church. Like Paul, Priscilla and Aquila were missionaries. They helped believers in Ephesus, in Acts 18, verses 18 to 28, in Rome when they were allowed to return, and again in Ephesus, 2 Timothy 4.19. They were mentioned quite a few times. So we understand that. All right, let's go back to the, the, the um, 16. We're going to talk about the people, okay? Mm -hmm. A little bit here, just so we know. Okay, now we're going on to 
greet my dear friend Eponidas. He was the first person from the province of Asia to become the follower of Christ. Give my greetings to Mary, who has worked so hard for your benefit. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my fellow, my fellow Jews, who were in prison with me. They are highly respected among the apostles and became followers of Christ before I did. Greet Ampliatus. <laughs> Ampliatus, I got it right. See, Ampliatus, yes, my dear friend in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our co worker in Christ. And my dear friend, Stackish. <laughs> Greet Apelles, a good man whom Christ approves. And give my greetings to the believer from the household of Aristobulus. God bless you. Greet Herodian, my fellow Jew. Greet the Lord's people from the household of Narcissus. Give my greetings to Terfina and Tyrophsa. Tyrophsa. <laughs> the Lord's workers. And to dear Persis, who has worked so hard for <clears throat> the Lord. Greet Rufus. <laughs> Shaka Khan too. <laughs> nah. I just had to put that in. <laughs> Whom the Lord picked out to be his very own. Listen, we can, we can have a personality at church. Don't worry about it, okay? God, is, God gives us a personality for a reason, okay? He wants us to use it. Whom the Lord picked out to be his very own. <laughs> and also his dear mother, who has been a mother to me. <coughs> Give my greetings to Ansicritus, Felgon, Hermes, Petrobus, Hermes, and the brothers and sisters who meet with them. Give my greetings to Philagus, Julia, Nereus, and his sister. How did he know? Paul knew all these people's names. Think about all the people involved in his life, in the ministry. And look how he's doing. He wants them to greet them. Look, we should greet each other and honor each other. And Olympus and all the believers who met with them, meet with them, greet each other with a sacred kiss. All the churches of Christ send you their greetings. <laughs> you get through the names pretty good, ain't it? Yeah. Okay. okay. All right, let me just go down a little bit and talk about this. Paul's personal greetings went to Romans and Greeks, Jews and Gentiles, men and women, prisoners and prominent citizens. The church's base was broad, crossing cultural, social, and economic lines. Okay? From this list, we learn that the Christian community was mobile. Okay? Though Paul had not yet been to Rome, he had met these people in other places on his journeys. Andronicus and Junia may have been a husband and wife team. The fact that they were highly respected among the apostles could mean they had distinguished themselves <coughs> as apostles. Paul notes that they were fellow Jews who at one time had been in prison with him. When we read books or listen to sermons, we should check out the content of what's written, okay? Or said, so that we won't be fooled by smooth talk in glowing words, okay? Christians who study God's word, which we do, asking him to reveal the truth will not be fooled by anything like that, even though superficial listeners may easily be taken in. For an example of believers who carefully check God's word, see Acts 17, 10 to 12. And who were they? Does anybody remember? It was the Bereans. They checked everything that Paul, what everything that Paul said, they went back and looked in the scriptures to make sure it was true. Wow. So I want you to be a Berean. Mm -hmm. Everything we talk about here, you can't, how can you miss? Well, all we do is read the Bible. There ain't nothing false going on here. Right. And that's the blessing. Look at verse 17. And now I make one more appeal, my dear brothers and sisters. This is what I'm talking about here. Watch out for people who cause divisions and upset people's faith. 
okay, by teaching things contrary to what you have been taught. Stay away from them. Such people are not serving Christ, our Lord. They are serving their own personal interests. <clears throat> by smooth talk and glowing words, they deceive innocent people, okay? But everyone knows that you are obedient to the Lord. This makes me very happy, you see? Once you got the, once, see, we know the Word of God really well. We know if somebody's talking a bunch of baloney mm -hmm. about God because we know it so well. That's why I'm so strict and I want you to read the Bible from cover to cover so you don't get deceived because you're not here all the time. A lot, of, a lot of stuff goes on out in the world. There's a lot of people that preach and talk and they're all in it for money and they're like snakes. You gotta be careful with what you listen to because there's a lot of half troops involved there. So they can get your money or to change your heart. Of course, it, look, you just stay on track with the Bible and you can't go wrong. You don't want to listen to false teachers, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. That's why I, I just want you to know you've got to be careful what you read and what you listen to out there. There's a lot of stuff out there that they add human wisdom <clears throat> to it. They add humanism to the gospel. And they try to decipher it and, and fit their theology into what the Bible says. It's a very, the Bible's very simple. It tells us not to sin anymore. Yeah. And it tells us what sin is, and it tells us how to live. Very simple. You don't need to go to Bible college for that. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. That's a fact, right? As a matter of fact, as we get into the next study, it's going to talk about the scholars and all the people, the philosophers, that think that they can break down the Bible and know it so well. Mm -hmm. God doesn't use people like that. He says it clearly in the Scripture. Now, look what it says. By smooth talk and glowing words, they deceive innocent people. And it is. You see these ministries flowing with millions and millions of dollars going to them. And they tell them people, we're going to give you a prayer cloth. Or we're going to give you some water from the Jordan River and sprinkle it on your mother so she can get healed. Just send us send us uh, your seed, your, your tenth of everything. And now we're going to send you this cloth and people are going to get healed from it. And people go for it because they're at their last resort with their family members that might be on their last leg, and they buy into it. Mm -hmm. And then you got people teaching the truth, and you can hardly get anything out of it. It's just the way it goes. Jesus was teaching the truth. He didn't have nowhere to sleep. They weren't, they weren't supporting him. They wanted to kill him. Yeah. So you're taking away our people. We're making money off these people. We're going to get rid of them. Why do you think they killed Jesus? Because they were taking away his people. They were taking away the Pharisees' money. And they're following. They were starting to follow him. So, oh, this is getting too dangerous here. We've got to get rid of this guy. People are starting to believe him. Mm -hmm. And they knew it was true. Yeah. They killed him anyway mm -hmm. for this, for money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, now look what it says. Look at verse 19. But everyone knows that you are obedient to the Lord. This makes me very happy. I want you to be wise in doing right and to stay innocent of any wrong. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. May the grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. Timothy, my fellow worker, sends you his greetings, as do Lucius, Jason, and Sassipata. <laughs> Sassipata. <laughs> My fellow Jews, Jews. <clears throat> I, Tedius, the one writing this letter for Paul. You see what it says right there? Tedius is the one who wrote this letter for Paul. Paul didn't write it himself. Somebody wrote it for him. But see how clearly it tells us that it was somebody that wrote it for him. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think that Paul wrote Hebrews, but nobody says Paul wrote Hebrews. Mm -hmm. and everybody's thinking it was him. Nobody. It, it doesn't really matter who wrote it, mm -hmm. and what the content is mm -hmm. of it. And everybody tries to figure out who wrote Hebrews. Well, obviously, maybe a Hebrew. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> I mean, who cares? It's what's inside that really matters. And people will actually... Divide over that. Say, no, that's definitely Paul. No, I think it was Timothy. Or it may have been a few different ones. How about what's inside it? 
and what it means for us. Exactly. Timothy was unbelievable. Let me um, talk about Timothy for a minute. Timothy, okay, was a key person in the growth of the early church, okay? Traveling with Paul on his second missionary journey, as in Acts chapter 16, verses 1 to 3 tells us. Later, Paul wrote two letters to him, right, First and Second Timothy, as he worked to strengthen the churches in Ephesus and to Timothy. We'll see his profile. Now, Paul exclaims that it is wonderful to be alive when God's secret plan, his way of saving the Gentiles, is becoming known throughout the world. All the Old Testament prophecies were coming true, and God was using Paul as his instrument to tell this good news. If you notice, in the New Testament, now that we're reading the Old, you see a lot of the scriptures from the Old Testament quoted by Paul, because he was studying on the Gamaliel, which was revealed in the early in the Old Testament, and he was going to become a Pharisee, if you remember in the book of Acts, right? Yeah. He was going to be the Pharisee of all Pharisees. He was actually killing Christians. Mm -hmm. And he thought he was doing God justice. And the Pharisees thought they, were, they knew God too. They didn't know God. They didn't know God at all. Mm -hmm. The God of the Bible is the God of love and peace. And if you read in the Old Testament, even as we're reading it now, Moses is telling them, when you fail and when you go into exile, they already knew they were going to do it. Yeah. As soon as Moses died, they went right off the wagon again and did whatever they wanted to do. And that's what caused them to go into exile again, as we're reading in the um, Old Testament, which is awesome. I think the David Walk, how long? Since I've been reading it this time, it's almost like, it's like a lie. Mm. Because there's other people involved reading yeah. it now. And like um, I'm reading it and other people are getting blessed yeah. by it. It makes me want to do it even more because I know that there's somebody else listening to it. Oh, yeah. and it. And it's the craziest thing. I'm listening to me, you know? Yeah, right. <laughs> because when I used to listen to it before, it was like on a, uh, playbooks, and it was like a robotic voice. that would, oh, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it was it was yeah. stale. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was just, eh, and then some of the words, they didn't say them right either. Right. And they <laughs> started and everything on there. You know what I mean? And I'm listening to me. Like, I'm not, I know I'm not perfect. I do the best I can with it. Yes, but but um, when I listen to it, I'm saying, wow. It's like it, it, it almost it, like it comes alive when somebody reads it, yeah. you know, than when you're just listening to it robotically. So I'm just glad that other people are jumping on board with that. And, and if you haven't jumped on board with it, listen, go on the podcast and do it. You can start now. You don't have to, like, wait till next year. Get on here and listen to the Bible every day. It's something you should want to do as a Christian. Want to listen to the Bible. Want to learn about God. Want to understand what his secret his plan is revealed and how he was leading up to Jesus all the way through the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. There was all types of Christ, and all Moses was a type of Christ. Remember the bronze snake and the serpent looked up, mm -hmm. and all the crazy, all the things led up to Jesus. <clears throat> he was going to be the final sacrifice. Remember all the sacrifices they had to do? Mm -hmm. One for this, one for that, slaughter the goat. So Jesus did, all, did that for us, so none of us have to do that anymore. Amen. He was a final sacrifice for our sins. Amen? Amen. We have to fact. understand that. As we learn the Old Testament saying, who would want to go back to that covenant? There's people that want to say, we want to go back and we want to take like, oh, I want to do that. I want the Sabbath to come back and I want certainly. No, you can't have like bits and pieces of the Old Testament. It's all or nothing. If you want the Sabbath, then you're going to obey all of the ceremonial laws. As a matter of fact, <laughs> They were so strict on the Sabbath, they couldn't do anything. No, no. And if they did, they stoned them. Yep. Look, if you did to perform any kind of work on the Sabbath, you died. Yep. That's how sacred and holy it was to God. Listen, God, listen, Moses, all he did, instead of speak to the rock, he struck the rock because he was angry. Yeah, no, yeah. And that kept him out of the promised land. Yep. That one, what are you trying to say? <laughs> Fail at one point, you're guilty of them all. Yeah, yeah. Like it says in Galatians. So you can't keep the law. You fail in one point, thought, word, and deed, you're guilty of the law. That's why people who try to follow the commandments can't. They say, oh, yeah, I, do. I don't do this. I don't steal. I don't do this. No, but Jesus said, even if you look at somebody with lust, you committed adultery. Guilty. So none of us can keep it. He was trying to tell them. It was leading up to us knowing that fail at one point if you're trying to keep all his commandments, 
and you're guilty of them all. It kept Moses out of the promised land. And look at all the things that he did that was good for God. That one act of disobedience kept him out of the promised land. So if you want to go back, Jesus was the final sacrifice, so we were guaranteed into the promised land now. Who would want to go back and try to do their rituals again? Amen? Amen. That's why I love Jesus even more. When you read the Old Testament, say, Thank you, Jesus, for giving me this new covenant. Because there ain't no way I can follow that old one. No kidding, right? Amen. Amen to that, right? Thank you, Jesus, man. He's that's a fact. He is the man. That's a fact. That is a fact. All right, so verse 22, we're going to close here. I tell this the one writing this letter for Paul. Send my greetings to us, one of the Lord's followers. Gaius, who says hello to you, he is my host and also serves as host to the whole church. Erastus, the city treasurer, sends you his greetings, and so does our brother Quartus. <laughs> I said it right that time. Quartus. Beautiful. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Now, all glory to God, who was able to make you strong. By the way, when I do them readings in the Old Testament, you know how all them words came up? Believe me, I pray before I go through that and read all that stuff. Oh, my goodness. It was like, it started to flow, though, and I'm like, and I did the best I could with it. That was, those are not, those trip up. You know what, like, like uh, my sister was saying, that it trips you up when you try to read that yourself. You get all tripped up in the Bible and you lose the meaning of the message because you can't pronounce the words and you get all messed up. So at least I do it for you. You don't have to go through that, right? You just yes, flow right through that's it. That's why I love it. Thank you, Jesus, right? That's all God. Trust me, I'm not that good at pronouncing things. Now all glory to God who is able to make you strong. Look what it says. Now all glory to God who is able to make you strong. Just as my good news says. This message about Jesus Christ has revealed his plan for you, Gentiles. A plan kept secret from the beginning of time. But now, as the prophets foretold, and as the eternal God has commanded, this message is made known to all Gentiles everywhere. See, this was kept secret. They didn't know. The prophets didn't know about all this. Paul got the revelation. So that they too might believe and obey him. All glory. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, forever. Amen. 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 All right, we just finished the book of Romans. Amen. Right now, time almost eight o'clock. That was good, right? Great. Romans was good. Amen. We'll always go back and revisit it again, but there's an, I already got another study ready to go, so we're going to close right there. Um, I don't see Brittany. She must be wet. Yeah, with the baby. <laughs> I think maybe we'll see. Yeah, why don't you go see if you can uh, find her? If she's available. If not, we'll just want to be with If somebody else wants to maybe. <laughs> she has a way of doing that, right? Does, huh? Here she comes. We got her. It's okay. <clears throat> no worries. Are you all right? Are you, are you good? All right. Jasmine. All right. Let's stand and worship the Lord. Number two.